the month of November might be the craziest month for manga releases. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel, Manga Geekdom here, and yeah, it's been a minute. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about all the November anticipated manga releases. My personal picks that I think are worth checking out. There's a lot to cover. Let's get started with the first one. Virgin Love Volume 1. This is a story by Tina Yamashina and this is being published by Kodansha. Shoko Shoji, intelligent, reliable, and beautiful. She has a secret. She is a 26-year-old virgin and mortified by non-existent love life. Every day she checks out the self-help and beauty section of her local bookstore, but never works up the courage to go any further. Pushed on by her friends, she moves into the Love House, a social experiment putting six lovelorn strangers under one roof to see what sparks may fly. Will Shoko and the friendly bookstore clerk she convinces to join her finally find love? Or will rivalry, lust, and lies bring it all crashing down? I gotta admit, I know this has its audience. A lot of people might be excited to pick this up. I wanted to add it here because I thought the premise was pretty silly and it reminded me of something out of reality TV, right? The fact that they're doing a love house, which is insane, and you could throw out many red flags right there, but sounds silly and quirky enough to include it on the list. I know this has its audience and a lot of people are probably curious enough to go check it out. Helsing Volume 1. This is the second edition. Now you might be wondering what is so special about this. Well, it comes with a revised translation, all 10 of these books. Essentially what you're seeing here is the deluxe edition hardcovers being brought back in their original format of the 10 small Tankoban editions. Helsing by Kota Hirano. What more can I say? This is a legendary series. Although I guess I should do a little public service announcement. If you're new to manga and you might be inclined to get this, just know that it is not this cinematic masterpiece. I'm not hating on Helsing. I love it. It's one of my favorites. But I saw a lot of people buying those deluxe hardcovers simply because of the FOMO and the fact that they got into Berserk and they thought everything was going to be Berserk quality. And Helsing is a completely different animal. It is raw, unfiltered, kick-ass, vampire against zombie non Nazi action and if you're into that sort of thing sort of b-movie type action cinema then you're gonna be right at home with Helsing if you don't have the deluxe edition hardcovers because of space issues or maybe budget reasons this is a nice alternative to own the original 10 volumes with the better revised translation Sakura Saku Volume 1. This is a story by Io Sakisaka and it is published by Viz Media under the Shoujo Beat label. As you guessed it, this is a shoujo release that some people are excited for. The story tells of a mysterious boy that comes to Saku Fujigaya's rescue when she falls ill on a train, but he leaves before she can thank him. After this experience, Saku never ignores strangers in need of help to emulate the boy who helped her. Saku would like to to thank the boy who helped her, but all she has is a note signed Ryosuke Sakura. She discovers that a boy at her high school, Haruki Sakura, has an older brother named Ryosuke. She then asks Haruki to deliver her thank you letter to Ryosuke, but why does he refuse? I do like the art on this one. I don't know when I'm gonna get around to checking this out, but thought I would put this out here to give it a spotlight for all of you guys to check out. Okay, here we go. The first of four box sets. Yeah, you heard me right. Four box sets in the month of November. Die Dark box set one from Q Hayashida. Now, this is pretty cool. Seven Seas is finally getting into the box set game, joining the ranks of other publishers. And it's going to be interesting. We're getting four box set releases for different series for the first time all in one month. If you're planning on getting them, good luck. We start off here with Die Dark. This box set contains volume one through four and as uh, an extra feature you get a double-sided poster and if you don't know this stars Zaha Zanko whose body has great and terrible powers they say that possessing his bones will grant you any wish even the desire to become ruler of the universe but Zanko is still a teenage dude with his own life and he isn't about to let every monstrous low life in the galaxy rip him limb from limb he and his skeletal buddy Avakian will use their dark powers to fend off any murderous attempt while they search space for whomever put this curse on 
on Sanko's bones because killing them might end the madness. This is a wonderful series by Hugh Hayashida, a lot of fun, still ongoing. I actually made a first impressions video on volume one if you want to check it out on the channel. And I think if you enjoyed Doro Hedoro, it's more of that, but the art I think is better. And obviously the story is a lot crazier. So yeah, if you are in that chaotic punk rockish vibe that Q Hayashida is known for with her art and storytelling, I think you'll be right at home with uh, Die Dark. The next one is Made in Abyss Season 1 Manga Box Set. This one contains the first five volumes plus two double-sided posters. This is the infamous manga by Akihito Tsukushi. In an age when the corners of the world have been scoured for their secrets, only one place remains unexplored, a massive cave system known as the Abyss. Those who traverse its endless pits and labyrinth-like tunnels are known as cave raiders. A young orphan named Rico dreams of following in her mother's footsteps as a cave raider. When she meets a strange robot when exploring the abyss, she's one step closer to achieving her goal. You probably know Made in Abyss. It's made headlines. The series can be dark, heavy, controversial. A lot of people are against the manga but enjoy the anime. I find myself somewhere in the middle to be honest, but you gotta admit that the art on the manga is spectacular. All controversies aside, this is a very interesting story with very well done characters that represents the best and the absolute worst of humanity. 365 Days to the Wedding, Volume 1. This is another Seven Seas publication. This is by Tamiki Wakaki. I probably butchered that. Sorry, Tamiki. The JTC travel agency is looking for someone to manage its brand new branch in Irkutsk. But for employees Oharu Takuya and Honjoiji Rika, they'd rather just stay home in Tokyo. Thankfully, they've discovered a way out. Their manager has narrowed down the recruits to bachelors. So what is if they just got married. The problem is they barely know each other at all. Can they convince their office they're engaged just long enough for the transfer to finish up? I probably butchered a ton of information from this release from the names and description and uh, places so I do apologize on that but the premise is wacky enough and Tamaki is notable for his other famous release The World God Only Knows. So if you're into that series you might want to check out 365 Days to the Wedding. Lullaby of the Dawn. This is a love love publication from Tokyo Pop and it is by Ichika Yuno. I gotta mention that this is a volume one by the way. Night after night, Elva steps forth into the Black Sea, sword in hand to drive back the creatures that surge from the waves. Elva is one of the Kanagi, warrior priest chosen by the divine to protect the island. With his snow white hair, unaging youth, and black stained limbs, proof of the corruption that gradually takes the life of every Kanagi, the local people fear and shun him, at least until his path crosses with that of a boy named Alto. Enraptured by Elva's strength and lonely soul, Alto swears to serve him and free him from his cursed fate. This sounds pretty epic. I like the whole idea of being a, a shunned protector and all that and the prejudice that comes with it, I guess, and that he's able to find love, strength, and all that stuff in this uh, new person that walked into his life. We're continuing the box set hype train. Here we have Orange Deluxe Edition box set. This contains all seven volumes of the original Orange series, plus a set of eight postcards. This is by Ichigo Takano. Orange is a pretty famous series. I actually did have it in my collection at one point. This is a slice of life, romance, time travel, sci-fi story. That all sounds like it couldn't work, but it does. We follow Naho. On the day she begins the 11th grade, she receives a letter from herself 10 years in the future. At first, she writes it off as a prank, but as the letter's predictions come true one by one, Naho realizes that the letter might be the real deal. Her future self tells Nao that a new transfer student, a boy named Kakeru, will join her class. The letter begs Nao to watch over him, saying that only Nao can save him from a terrible future. Who is this mystery boy? And can Nao 
save him from his destiny. Now something I want to mention real quick about Orange is that previously the only way to get this series was in two thick omnibus softcover editions. So that still remains an option and a good one at that, but if you want to own the original single released volumes, they just happen to be collected in a box set, this might be for you. So think about that when you are making your purchase. The fourth box set from Seven Seas is, from one of their emblematic licenses, The Ancient Magus Bride Season 1. This set contains volumes 1 through 9, plus two double-sided posters. This is story and art by Kore Yamazaki. Hattori Chise has lived a life full of neglect and abuse, devoid of anything resembling love. Just when all hope seems lost, a man with the head of a beast and wielding strange powers obtains her through a slave auction and now Chize's life will never be the same again. The man is a magus, a sorcerer of great power, who decides to free Chize from the bonds of captivity. The magus then makes a bold statement, Chize will become his apprentice and his bride. Honestly, this is a fantastic dark fantasy series with romance. I highly recommend it. This is one of my favorites, so yeah, this is a no-brainer. <laughs> I do own the series in single volume, so I'm not going to get the box it, but if you're interested, this is a perfect way to get introduced to this wonderful, uh, magical world from Ancient Magus Bride. We got an omnibus release. This is Orb on the Movements of the Earth, another Seven Seas release. You would think they'd be sponsoring this video, right? A uh, shout out to Seven Seas, I guess. Orb on the Movements of the Earth, Volume 1, collects Volumes 1 and 2 in an oversized edition featuring story and art by Uoto. In 15th century Europe, heretics are being burned at the stake. Rafal, a brilliant young man, is expected to enter university at an early age and study the era's most important field. Field, theology, but Rafael values reason above all else, which leads him both to the shocking conclusion that the Earth orbits the Sun and into the hands of the Inquisition. A decade later, two members of the Watch Guild find a stone chest that details the secrets of the universe Rafael left behind. Dare they try to change their own stars by selling the heretical text, or would that only lead to the stake and the fire? Ever since the announcement that this was getting an omnibus edition, I I've been keeping an eye on it. I'm very interested. I have to admit, I've not read this. The art looks beautiful. And this is up my wheelhouse with the whole historical aspect. So yeah, wholeheartedly recommend Orb on the Movements of the Earth. Origin Volume 1 from Boichi, one of my favorite modern artists. I really enjoy Boichi's artwork. I'm a huge fan of Dr. Stone. That's how I got introduced to Boichi. So now we have his manga called Origin. Tokyo 2048, Japan is now connected to the entire Northern Hemisphere by the Eurasian Railroad, and all manner of crime and vice pour into the megalopolis at its eastern terminus. Little do the people know that inhuman beings live among us. However, robots with high-level AI, who kill to survive. Only one man can stop them. Their prototype, Origin. This sounds really badass and sci-fi heavy. Up my wheelhouse. This is my jam. I can't wait. The art is absolutely breathtaking to me. Again, like I said, I'm a huge fan of Boichi, so you know that I'm getting this uh, day one. Can't wait. Lord Hades Ruthless Marriage Volume 1. This is being published by Yen Press and it is a story by Ueji Yuho. Hades, the powerful and terrifying king of the underworld and a bachelor. Despite his retainer's wishes, Hades refuses to give up his life as a single god, unconvinced that love and marriage are worth the hassle. But when Eros suddenly shoots him with an arrow of love, will he be able to successfully avoid falling head over heels with the next person? And he sees. I love this. This sounds like a blast. Super funny to me. Quirky enough. I want to check this out. I'm a big fan of uh, Greco-Roman mythology, so I will absolutely be on the lookout for Lord Hades' Ruthless Marriage, Volume 1. Interesting. Takopi's Original Sin by Taizan5. This is being published by Viz Media. This had a lot of hype. A lot of people have been clamoring for this one, so I was surprised. 
deceptively cute alien Takopi lands on Earth. What is Takopi's mission? To be taken to our leader? No, it's to spread happiness throughout the universe. The first person he meets is a depressed fourth grader, Shizuka. Takopi resolves to do whatever it takes to make Shizuka smile again, but his misguided attempts to cheer her up with his advanced alien technology and ability to turn back time only result in death and mayhem. What is the truth Takopi can't remember? And what must the alien octopus with a heart of gold sacrifice to truly help Shizuka and her friends? This has the Viz Media price increase, so it's a $20 release. Just be on the lookout for that when you're budgeting your manga purchases. Now this next one, I do have to put a little asterisk on it. I think it is coming out, but lately all of Osamu Tezuka's books are met with delays. So I don't know. <laughs> I am 95% sure it is coming out, but just in case, you might see it delayed to December or January of next year. It is the Shakespeare Manga Theater. And just like the name implies, you can probably figure this out. This is being published by Ablaze Manga, story and art by the legendary Osamu Tezuka. This collects all of Tezuka's Shakespeare adaptations into manga format. This book includes his versions of The Merchant of Venice, uh, Robio and Roviette, Macbeth, Hamlet, The Taming of the Shrew, and Othello. This is more of a creative adaptation by Tezuka, just inspired by these wonderful stories from William Shakespeare. Kiss the Scars of the Girls, Volume 1. This is another Yen Press release with story and art by Aya Haruhana. Deep within a dense forest stands an academy for girls whose students share a secret. They're all vampires. To learn to hunt without attracting human attention, the maidens forge bloody bonds of sisterhood. But what fate will their ties bring? Keeping it real with you guys, I wasn't a fan of vampire themed manga, but then I told myself, Geo, you're sounding like a hypocrite considering uh, Call of the Night happens to be one of my favorite ongoing modern vampire stories. <laughs> so yeah, I'm intrigued already. I like the whole idea of vampires out there hiding from people. So yeah, if I'm able to, I'll definitely give this a read. Team Phoenix, Volume 1. This is being put out by Udon Entertainment. Art and story by Kenny Ruiz. Now, this is pretty interesting. This is a modern take on all of Tezuka's greatest creations. The description here says, the robotic alliance dominates 90% of the universe, but one of the brave biologics or organic organisms, Sapphire, Princess Knight of Silverland, forms a band of space pirates to strike back against injustice. Joining her in her rebellion are Leo and Sharaku, the three-eyed one. The curtain rises on this space opera starring the heroes created by Osamu Tezuka. Now this is pretty cool. I like that Kenny is paying homage to these wonderful creations and I'm pretty sure the pressure is on because you're taking a huge risk of taking the ideas that a legendary creator made and implementing them in new ways that people aren't accustomed to. We're not used to Princess Knight leading a band of space pirates. So yeah, that's gonna be interesting. Hopefully it does sell well and people are excited for it. I know it recently ended it in Japan, so we should be seeing this uh, collected across maybe five or six volumes, give or take. One more step, come stand by my side. This is another Yen Press release by Takeda Toriumon. Hope I said that right. The wordless time a kidnapped princess and her fingerless caretaker spend together. The 10 minutes an ordinary woman spends with her stalker. The six months a man learns is all he has left to spend with his beloved, terminally ill wife. These are some of the moments we have to share with the people featured in this collection of seven of Takeda Toriumon's bond one shots including his highly acclaimed the wife i loved dearly this sounds tragic awesome amazing and i can't wait to get my hands on it i love short stories and one shots especially when you have dramatic story elements like this 15 minutes before we really date volume one 
from Yen Press. This is story and art by Periko. Yuki and Natsuna live in the same apartment complex and have been childhood friends for 10 years. One day on the way home, with their high school graduation fast approaching, they make a decision on a whim to start dating. In the 15 minutes before things get a little more serious, will their friendship finally blossom into love? Sounds like a quirky rom-com in the making, so I'm sure a lot of people are excited to check this out. That's why I included the manga here on this list. Innocent Volume 1 Omnibus Edition. This is by Shinichi Sakamoto, which recently made waves in the North American manga scene, if you will, by the wonderful DRCL release from Viz Media. Now we have his other famous series, Innocent. This omnibus collects the first three volumes of that, and it is the story of Charles Henry Sanson, who is born into a family of executioners. He must take up his father's mantle as the royal executioner of Paris, conflicted between his desire to honor the family name and rebelling against the long-standing practice. He chooses to follow tradition, but vows to be the last executioner, the last Sanson to spill blood in the name of justice. So this is a fictionalized version of the real Charles Henry Sanson, which is pretty cool. The art on this is the biggest selling point. Shinichi Sakamoto is a beast when it comes to art. Everything that man draws looks absolutely gorgeous on paper and I highly recommend you pick this up. Speaking of breathtaking artwork, Gotanabe's H.P. Lovecraft's The Shadow Over Innsmouth. In the winter of 1927, the isolated coastal settlement of Innsmouth, Massachusetts, was assaulted by U.S. government agents. Its waterfront burned and dynamited, but its people taken away to internment camps. Yet, that was neither the beginning nor the end of the horror uncovered by a young antiquarian who traveled to Innsmouth in search of rumors from the town's dead past, only to find them still very much alive and find truths lying underwater deeper and colder than any earthly grave. I have not read the original, but I have read Gotanabe's adaptations of previous H.P. Lovecraft material. So yes, I will definitely be picking this up. Looks amazing. And on the description, it says that the book includes a Tipman title page in silver ink with 12 pages of color. That's really cool. Gold Kingdom and Water Kingdom. From Seven Seas Entertainment, this is by Nao Iwamoto. Once upon a time, two countries who shared a border wouldn't stop squabbling over petty issues. Their spats eventually escalated into war over an incident involving dog poop. Finally, the gods declared that both nations had to call a truce. The most beautiful girl in the Gold Kingdom would marry the smartest man in the Water Kingdom, paving the way to a new era of peace. When Sarah, a princess from the Gold Kingdom, meets a charming man named Naranbayar from the Water Kingdom, they decide to do what it takes to stop more pointless conflict between their countries by pretending to be in love. Will their plan work? And what if real romantic feelings blossom between them? I like that the whole premise of this book is about dog poop, or at least the catalyst for the story. That's awesome. This fun little quirky Jose bonga has been recommended to me in the past, so I'm very much looking forward to owning this book. Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Part 6 Stone Ocean Volume 1 hardcover. We're finally done with Golden Wind after many years, and now we're getting ready to start collecting part six of the legendary JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. This one, of course, adapts Jolene's adventure, which at this point, you probably already know about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I don't want to read the description just in case, because eh, there's some spoiler-ish elements to it, but obviously this is part six of a much larger series, and I know it's a huge commitment to owning all of it, but if you already have the previous five parts of JoJo, you're gonna get part six, right? So there you go. I dreaded putting this book on this list, but here it is. Gannibal Volume 1 from a Blaze manga. This is a book written by Masaaki Ninomiya. After the mysterious disappearance of a countryside cop, the role is reassigned to Officer Daigo Agawa. He finds the remote village quaint and he looks forward to an easygoing post among warm and welcoming citizenry. Then he gets a call. The body of a local grandmother has been found. The scene immediately sows doubt for the young policeman. A human bite mark has been left on the corpse. 
and any voiced suspicion of Agawa's is met with a strange, sudden, and intense hostility. Something dark is lurking under the idyllic facade of the charming mountain village, but can Officer Agawa spare himself and his family from it? A lot of people are excited for this. I have to admit, this grosses me out. I've seen the art. I know what uh, the secret here is. You can probably tell from the description. There's a Kickstarter release for this. I think it's ending soon as of me making this video, so you might want to check that out. And if it already ended, well, sorry. But it is coming out regardless. Uh, Gannibal, I don't know. I think it's gross. And shame on all the manga fans out there that want to own this book. I'm kidding. Please don't hate me. We got a deluxe anniversary edition. This is for Tekon Kinkrit Black and White, the 30th anniversary edition. We previously had this release from Viz Media. Of course, it was published as a uh, Western graphic novel reading from left to right. And after so many years, we finally have this release coming out. What's so special about it? Well, it is the 30th anniversary edition and it is restored to its original right to left orientation featuring all the original color pages, a full color fold out poster, and a brand new afterword by the legendary Tayo Matsumoto. If you don't know about Tech on Kinkri, this is the story of Treasure Town and two young boys, black and white. They rule the streets like avatars of the city itself. They are its will and its voice, full of love and compassion, as well as danger and violence. As they leap from rooftop to rooftop, from lamppost to lamppost, nothing escapes their notice. Notice, but the city is changing beneath their feet as a Yakuza blacked corporate development moves in. When the gangsters make a play to remove black and white, the boys push back. Honestly, this is a phenomenal, legendary series. Tayo Matsumoto is one of the best writers out there in the game. Don't know what else to say. Pick this up, please. This is a worthy addition to your manga shelf. I do own the original Viz Media release, so I will be upgrading as soon as I can to this deluxe anniversary edition. Next up from Kodansha, we got Cells at Work, the Omnibus Edition, Volume 1. This collects Volumes 1, 2, and 3 in an omnibus format featuring story and art by Akane Shimizu. So I think you know about Cells at Work. It follows the life inside our body as, you know, red blood cells, white blood cells, and all the different elements of uh, human biology as they run their course in our body and defend us against uh, bacteria, illnesses, and stuff like that. And you see it, of course, in human form as these characters run around and it's run like a corporation, like a big factory. Think Osmosis Jones, only not as odd as that movie was. My Lovesick Life as a 90s Otaku, Volume 1. This is another Kodansha release. This is written and drawn by Nico Nicholson. Otaku culture has finally become mainstream and Megumi can't quite get used to it. Divorced with a teen daughter, Megumi thinks fondly back to her days as an anime and manga otaku in 1995. That year, she transferred to a new school and decided to start fresh by hiding her otaku interest. She found herself taken under the wing of a basketball ball ace named Masamune, who's got a kind heart and looks just like one of her favorite characters, though Megumi catches a whiff of destiny in the air. She's crushed to learn that Masamune detests otaku. This sounds like a wacky rom-com in the making. Again, I like these uh, fun little premises. I hate to say this because I'm gonna date myself here. Even though I was born late 80s, I'm still a 90s kid, you know? That's when I grew up and started enjoying pop culture and all that nonsense. So this speaks to me as a 90s child. I'm looking forward to it. 1995, that takes me back. I can't even begin to tell you. So yeah, definitely be on the lookout for this if you are uh, clamoring for a retro manga like this. And finally, we're going to close out the video. Even though this is not a volume one, you would have to buy 13 other hardcovers. I do want to point out that we are getting the Berserk Deluxe Edition Omnibus Volume 14 hardcover from Dark Horse Comics. This started a revolution for North American readers when the first hardcover came out. Everybody got into Berserk, everybody became a fan, and everybody collectively, uh, we we were devastated when we found out of Kentaro Miura's passing. 
tragic, gone way too soon under horrific circumstances, if you think about it, as a uh, professional. And this is a pretty big deal. It's the final hardcover of his beloved series that he so passionately worked on. We have here volume 40, 41, and the official guidebook. Of course, we know that his friend, along with Studio Gaga, is continuing Berserk and putting out new chapters, but for a lot of people, it's not the same. You want the Miyota stuff, right? And this is a wonderful uh, tribute to a master of sequential art. The art on this is breathtaking, and it's so cool that the series can reach out worldwide and become such a phenomena and um, impact so many people's lives out there. This is not for the faint of heart, Berserk, but if you're willing to read it, you're going to be uh, greeted with phenomenal stories of perseverance and wonderful characters that stare at the darkest scenario right in the face and have the balls to keep going and keep marching forward. And I think those are powerful lessons for a lot of people out there, myself included. So yeah, uh, if you're interested in Berserk and you want to get the hardcovers, they, they will be Evergreen from Dark Horse Comics. So yeah, I would get volume one and you're going to read it and be enamored or <laughs> repelled by this uh, world, but it will leave a lasting impression. And here we have 14, which uh, concludes uh, Miuda's tenure of writing his masterpiece. Unfortunately, he couldn't see the end of it, but how lucky we are that we lived in a world with uh, Kentaro Miuda. Definitely excited to add this to the collection and finish off uh, the Berserk Deluxe Editions. Will we get a volume 15? I'm pretty sure we will. We have new volumes coming out in Japan, so it's only a matter of time. Give it, I don't know, two, three years, and we will probably see a volume 15 hardcover collected. Whew, so there you go, guys. That was a long video. Thank you for hanging in there. I truly do appreciate it. If you watched all the way to the end, just know that I think you are an amazing individual. I love every single one of you. Thank you so very much. What books are you excited for from the list or some other releases that I did not mention? Let me know in the comment section down below. That's going to be it for now. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, and being a part of Manga Geekdom here. I've got to go. God bless. Stay safe, everybody. I will catch all of you on our next video.